Alright, today is another proof of life uh, at the Brewing Academy and we're going to do a 1088 XEL. By the way, this is one of the posters that we can do for you. We do it on our printer right here. This big format printer. These are all the 3D printers hard at work printing things. Uh, we print a number of posters for you, including this one, which is the best movie in the world. Okay, well, this one's pretty good, too. Anywho, we've got a 1088 XEL, built to customer specifications. This 1088 XEL has a Sophia Revision C1536 connected to a DVI monitor here. It's got standard PS2 mouse, PS2 keyboard, composite video, and it's got stereo sound right there. It also has an RGB port. If you have a VBXE, you can connect it there. And you have standard stock SIO and an SIO 2 PC via micro USB connector, which we have connected here to this Mac Mini and being run by Respect. And I've set this up. It's set to DSR handshaking. The compact flash, dual compact flash drive is right here. It also has a disc swap button and your standard lid with your standard um, lid indicator lights. And you have a DVI back plane with dual compact flash slots. It's also in a Reland H80 box and it's also got the mouse select switch for mouse usage. I've got a couple of things connected to it. I've got this S drive right here set for D1. A couple of reasons just so that I can demonstrate that stock SIO works. This is not in a case it's just one I pulled out of the box and uh, we'll put a case in it when it sells. Respect I showed you about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button in the front here and then I'm going to also, before I do that, I'm going to make sure that both screens are on because the reason why is I want to demonstrate to you that one of the cool things about the 1088 is that you, in any version, is that you can drive multiple screens simultaneously. So this is connected to S-Video, composite video, as well as DVI. And I've got it set up so that this screen could take all of those inputs, but instead of switching between all three of them, I've got this one set up for composite, and then this one set up for DVI and S-Video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this over to the uh, S or the composite on this and boot it. Just going to press the front button here. You can see it lights up. There's a polling access for the compact flash. That's normal. We see both of these set up. And it's got a config.sys configuration. These are my compact flash drives, so it's you're seeing my boot up when I don't have a VBXE installed. And see, it's just marching through. I'm going to switch it back here. So that'll turn that screen off, just because that's the switch box I've got set up. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to switch to S-Video here, where it's, it's nice and crisp. It's not as crisp as the DVI, but it's certainly more crisp than the composite was. Okay, so we're going to leave it on DVI here, just because it's easier for the camera to pick up. And I'm going to switch to a distance mode and pick up the keyboard. One thing I want to point out before I do that is the indicator lights for stereo and V-gate. Stereo sound obviously because there's a dual pokey installed. And then V-gate is to make sure that there's no overscan on the screens since we've got digital output for video. A lot of times sometimes it overscans and gets truncated. This is an activity light for the compact flash, an activity light for SIO 2 PC. I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of that to show that the lights are working. And I'm going to do that by doing a directory of D5. That's compact flash. Okay, and I'm going to do a directory of D1. And do a directory 
memory so you can see it a little longer. Okay. And then I do a directory of D3, which is this over here. And the reason why you see both the Compact Flash and the SIO doing is because my path is set up to scan the hard drive. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to put you in distance mode here. Uh, what I'm going to do is turn this just a wee bit like this. And we're going to telephoto in so you can see the screen. There we go. Cool. All right, so I'm going to grab this keyboard and go back. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is boot into the um, a firmware or the BIOS setting so that I can set that up for you. So this, you get into this by pressing F12 on your keyboard or shift plus help. And this gives you the ability to um, change anything that's on here. So for example, let's start at the beginning because that's easiest. The default that I set these to are one meg Rambo, but you could easily set it by pressing enter while it's highlighted to a stock 64K XL, a 320K Rambo, a 576 Copy Shop, or the 1 Meg Rambo. You can change it to XL OS or Atari OSB, which is the um, 400-800 OS. This is the PAL version. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to run PAL software, because PAL software requires a PAL GTIA as well as a PAL Antic. And so, um, it might get you past a couple of screens, but you never know. You could also set this to Altera, which is what the emulator is based on, XEGS, or back to XL. In the 8K Basic slot, you have Atari Basic C, or you have Altera Basic, Atari Assembler Editor, or CineAssembler, whichever you want to pick. It's, it's easy to change as that. You can also make sure that Basic is always off. Or you can leave it to the default, which means you can still use option to boot or not. XEGS ROM is disabled because that switch is not enabled on the Ultimate. Also, you're running an XL, I think a 1088 XEL, I think you're good. Spardos X is enabled, and there's a graphical OS that's here that I'll show you in a minute that's very cool, and it's part of FJC's, the person that designed the firmware that runs the Ultimate 1 megabyte, and thus is the brains of the 1088 XEL. Boot to loader means that upon power on, it's going to go to the loader screen and not to SpartaDOS. That's great if that's all you're ever going to use is the loader. I like to boot to SpartaDOS because that makes it kind of a regular machine for me. You want to make sure that 8K ROMs are compatible. This is going to do that. Let's go to the next screen here, which is just system date and time. You can set that via here, but it takes way too long to do it. Your best way is to set it via the time, the SpartaDOS prompt, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, Stereo Pokey is enabled or disabled. You can change the Pokey RRQ. I don't know of any software that does that right now, but it's available for you. GTIA, you can uh, the V-Gate that I told you about is enabled or disabled. PBI BIOS. This is what activates your hard drive. It does a lot of other things, but you want to make sure that it's always enabled. This will tell you what version of driver is. By the way, it pops up on the screen. You want a hard drive or compact flash enabled. I put the boot drive always to D5. Why is that? Because most Physical floppies are set to D, D1 through D4. You can have up to 15 drives on an Atari, but 
technically 16 because it's 8-bit. But physically, the physical drives like an XF551, a 1050, a RANA, whatever, can only be set to 1 through 4. Yes, I know the 815 by Atari could be set up to 15, but nobody has one of those except for the rare few, so it's not really an argument, is it? Um, sorry, that was for the peanut gallery. Uh, Configsys means that SpartaDOS will look for Configsys on drive 5. You can set it so set it so that, sorry, my keyboard's acting up here. Set it so that you can't uh, write to the hard drive or erase it. And um, slave drive has to be enabled because you have two drives. The, the wording a little awkward, but we'll go by. Okay, high speed I.O. is set uh, for all drives. I have also set for the S.I.O. noise, the beep, 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 or high speed <laughs> So that if you access the hard drive, an ATR, a file, or via the stock SIO, you get those noises. I don't know. It just seems kind of cool to me, and it may, it reminds me that a drive is being accessed. This tells you all about the 1088 and what's installed in it. This is the newest version of the firmware. It's 3.1. You can see it's XEL, XLD, and Compact Flash. That's the version of the driver. It's a 6502 running an NTSC and not a PAL. There is no VBXE, but stereo is present. This could change if you had a Rapidus or something like that. A BIOS menu, you get into it by pressing help on a power cycle. So either a reset or a hard power on. Cold boot is disabled. In other words, if you jump E477, it's not going to go to a cold boot. It'll go to a warm boot. You see the 1088. XEL logo at, bio, at the hard drive boot, sorry, at the system boot. You can change your ROM if you want to make sure that ROMs don't get flashed, like the Ultimate 1 Meg ROM or a Side 2 ROM or something like that, then you can turn that off. Uh, joystick, meaning you can control this port via, control this menu via a joystick in port 1. Honestly, I have this disabled because I usually put a stick pick in there to flash pick chips and I leave it in there all the time and so uh, when I boot into the menu and I haven't taken that out of the joystick port the menu flips through different things because it's getting active signals not a fault of the menu fault of me leaving it in the port but I'm lazy so I just disable it sounds enabled uh, screensaver is enabled from this menu right all right uh, if you had a Rapidus, we would be talking about this here. You don't, so we won't. Uh, all of these keys in the brackets can be pressed at any time on any screen in this menu. So if you want to, if you've done the changes you need and you want to just save it and boot, then press B. If you want to get to the loader, do that. I want to save because we made one change with the joystick. And then I'm going to press L and go to the loader. Now, what is the loader? The loader is what allows you to access different partitions on your compact flash drive. It allows you to load ATR files or XEX files that you wouldn't normally get access to at the SpartaDust prompt. Now, I said wouldn't ordinarily. If you load the fat.sys driver at SpartaDust, it will allow you to access files on a FAT16 partition. And if you'll notice, if we look at this partition here, or this uh, unit here, by the way, this says we have two drives. We do one's 4 meg, one's 2 meg. But we look at the partitions. You'll notice that there's a FAT32. That's the partition we're accessing right now. The APT, which is the partitions for the Atari, and we'll see those in a minute, and then two FAT partitions. And the FAT partitions can be accessed, and you see they're FAT16, from that SpartaDOS prompt. They're not exceedingly fast, but they can get the job done. So what I want to do now is I want to load a file that's in here. And it's going to demonstrate how to use the swap button on the Compact Flash hard drive. So. We now, as a community, have incredible access to 
all of these different digital versions of the games and the programs that we used to play and run. The problem is, is that a lot of these programs, especially the more powerful ones, or the games that were very powerful, had multiple disks. And it's very difficult to flop or flip uh, a virtual floppy. And so the way that was developed to do that was you write a map file which tells uh, the computer where to find the, the uh, next floppy or what the next floppy is called. And then you press a button and then it loads the next floppy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this map file, which is a demo. And it's going to load it up. I'm going to hit enter and press so it starts up. So you'll notice, and I'll get you a little closer here, you'll notice that it loaded up the first disk. And it says, hey, insert side two. So what you do is you go over here and you press this button right here. Bam. You'll notice that the LED lights up. So what I'm going to do is I'll hold this and I'm just going to press enter now. And it starts loading drive two. Also, the light went out as soon as I pressed enter. And as you can tell, it loads it up. Pretty cool, huh? showed you the loader and it also showed you the disk swap button. What I want to do now is demonstrate the fact that the SIO 2 PC is working. We'll just get out of here and well, no, why don't we do this? Since we're here, let's load the graphical OS. I just enabled it which automatically disables SpartaDOS and it's gonna load up this really cool graphical OS. It looks great in DVI. It also looks great in S-Video. Doesn't look so great in composite, but hey, you don't have to look at it in composite, so you're all good, right? Now, this also, the reason I bring this up is because you'll notice this button right here. So this is your uh, mouse port swap button. Red right now it means it's in disk or it's in port 2. And I'm just going to use this right here and you'll notice it works nice and neatly. Uh, go up here. This doesn't do a heck of a lot right now but it does have potential. And I think the more people that have the access to this, and you give up nothing by having access to it, but the more people that have access to this, I think the better off we are. Now, the way you change the port on this is there's a little button right here. Just press it. It'll go off. Press it again for green. That means it's changed ports. And to get back to the original, press twice. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Not move the camera again. I'm going to boot back into the BIOS. I'm going to enable SpartaDOS, which will automatically disable. Apparently it's shut off anyway, so yeah, so. <sighs> okay. We put the cartridge in, it's just Pac-Man. We can power up. 
You're going to see the Splash logo just like normal. And then some Pac-Man Fever. Okay, and then I'm going to just get a standard joystick here. I'm going to plug it into you know, I have an extension port I have right here. I'm going to press fire. And back and forth. Down. Apparently the extension cable has a problem. Up and down, right and left. I think the power pill is just to come on. Just meant to get you in trouble. So, anyways. Looks good. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is power on and I'm going to enable spark us and I re-enable this I'm going to boot no BBXC Okay, let's see. Is there anything we haven't demonstrated? S video, sound, SIO2 PC, joystick port. Oh, let's do one thing. Let's go into the loader and let's It's just an easier way to demo well, since we've got it plugged into port 1. Okay, that all works, and then we'll plug it into port 2, okay, so everything is golden, uh, disk swap, stock SIO, yeah, everything's golden, uh, I'll wipe the fingerprints off of this, and then we'll box it up and get it out of Dodge, thank you very much. Uh, if you are not the customer, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or anything, I'm McRory at thebrewingacademy.com. And McRory, M-A-C-R-O-R-I-E. If you've read any tales of Dorini, you know where I got that name. If you didn't, well, that's, that's you. Uh, other than that, thanks. Talk to you soon. And bye for now.